Well, hello, everybody. It's Record Time with Chris, episode 60. I'm Chris, and I have about a third of this year's Record Store Day Black Friday releases to show you. And before I start, I just want to mention that there's a expand the like video details down here. You, uh, I got a whole timeline in there showing all the stuff that's in the video, so take advantage of that. But also, there'll be some surprises, so hey, let's just get started with the releases. When I was in junior high, this this kid I know just, I don't know, thought he was going to be cute and was like, hey, do you know Roy G. Biv? And I, I was like, I don't know, who's Roy G. Biv? What do you mean? You see him every day. And it's like, what, the fuck, you know, what are you talking about? And he's like, you know, red, orange, yellow, blue, indigo, violet, Roy G. Biv. So, let me show you the red records. Bronco, this is bad. It's a 12-inch. Another red one. Willie Cologne, salsa, vintage salsa, um, and for the Fania label has been uh, reactivated by Concord Music Group, so we're going to see a ton of really good stuff like this, and this is another all-analog record cut by Kevin Gray. Desperado soundtrack on, I think they're calling it blood and gunpowder vinyl, so probably mostly red. Hall & Oates, Home for Christmas. This is also red with King Rec Records. Merry Christmas from King Records. Red vinyl. This is who's on it. Oh, orange. Katy Perry record. Two tracks. On to yellow now. Lenny K in the flesh tone, seven inch. This one is yellow. All right, here's a gold record. Freddie King, The Mojo, and these are all unreleased tracks. This one I can show you, Buffy St. Marie, Illuminations. This is another all analog cut done by Kevin Gray. It comes with an insert, and it is on this yellow vinyl, which is maybe a little bit orangey, a little bit goldenrod, you can feel it. It's nice and heavy, uh, 180 gram vinyl. You can see it comes in the QRP sleeve. So, um, fortunately, I've heard this one. It's like a super quiet pressing, sounds great. And also, it's a pretty weird sounding record because it's like, um, um, like in your mind, you might have her kind of bridging the gap between like early 60s folk revival, like Joan Baez and then she sits between that, between like Joan Baez and Joni Mitchell, like chronologically. But this album is weird. There's because there's all this like, like tape. There are all these like tape loops that were done with her voice in like a electronic music studio in New York. So there's like these um, really weird collages, sound collages at the beginning and ends of a lot of the songs that make it like totally psychedelic but in a really like weird and more like uh you know arty kind of way um certainly influenced by the same things that the beatles were influenced by with like revolution number nine and um even uh tomorrow never knows sort of in that same same kind of idea it's really weird so like um might be a cool frank piece if you're um want to listen to more if you want to listen to more like 60s folk music but um <clears throat> you know you find like peter paul and mary a little bit just too tame or you know obvious or something like that um that's a nice and weird record and she's awesome okay more yellow this is william shatner and the cramps this has um the original cramps version of the song garbage man it's got Another cramp song might have been the B-side if that was ever as a single, and then three versions of the the Shatner version. There's the uh, regular one that was on the Covered in Punk compilation, and then you get the Shatner vocal only mix, and then there's an instrumental mix. So I guess you can um, actually it's more like getting stems. So you can uh, you know I guess rip this into your computer and then decide if you want to remix it. That'd be kind of fun. This year's Vitamin String Quartet selection is the music from Nightmare Before Christmas. And this year's 
Rockabye Baby, which is lullaby stuff that now it's uh, Snoop Dogg. Okay, Roy G. Biv, here's the G, Green. This is one of the records that everybody was like, whoa, when the list came out. It's this 3LP, uh, Les Claypool's Frog Brigade, Fro Frog Brigade, right? Set, the set two is what it's called. So it's a live album. Let me show you the back. It's like a triple gatefold, three green records. And this has like, um, like he covers all of Pink Floyd animals, which is really cool. Um, it, it, it's been out on CD before and um, it's cool. There's also like a King Crimson cover and maybe another Pink Floyd cover and like three of his songs. This record has a pretty cool history behind it. Um, the there was this, you know, there's the Jazz Dispensary series, which like every Record Store Day or Record Store Day Black Friday, they've had a really cool compilation like funk, usually funk or soul jazz. And in fact, it was through these that I got to know the uh, the guys at um, Coal Mine Records, the Coal Brothers, because uh, somebody saw the video, posted something about it, just because I was like, whoa, the first song on here is really awesome. And it was something that they had released. So uh, they have a store in Ohio, and you know, we're just like internet friends, but they're um, everybody, you know, they seem like really cool guys. So that has, they don't have any songs on this one, though. This is um, curated, right? So the songs for this one were selected by Doyle, who works at Grimey's in Nashville. And if you like, are kind of like working an independent record store, if you're kind of part of the scene or you're like a label person who deals with that or you go to like just go record shopping in Nashville or whatever, like everybody knows Doyle. And so it totally makes sense that you would ask him to put this together. And it's really, it's a, uh, it's a really, it's a great compilation. Let me just start with the artwork, which I don't think Doyle had anything to do with. Who knows? I guess I should have asked that before I make shit up on the internet, but you know, everybody else does that. Here we go. It's a kind of like a nice marbly green vinyl. And there's a little bit of white in there and there's a little bit of red. Really nice printed inner sleeve. And this is like, the same kind of like style it visually it's very similar to the other jazz dispensary uh releases and i've got most of them and they're all pretty great but let me just tell you who's on here so um like bernard purdy's on at least two of the eight tracks they're all longer funk or like on the soul jazz side of things you know but just like richard group Holmes, and it's like you know the theme from shaft and you got super bad on there that theme melvin sparks uh, Funk Incorporated. It's a it's a really it's a cool compilation. Um, again, if you are if you're interested in getting into that kind of music, that kind of music, it's a great maybe good Frank piece for you if you like uh, you know listen to a lot of hip hop, but you don't have a lot of the stuff that was sampled, uh, especially like in the um, like '80s and '90s kind of classic hip hop era. Good choice. Here's another green one, State Songs by John Linnell of the They Might Be Giants. Here we go again, nice four color sleeve. And this one is another green marble, but this time it's like a translucent lighter green with darker green and uh, like an opaque yellow mixed in. And I just wanna show you that this here. So look how this, the track titles are on the label. You see how it's, they're laid out like a map. And so if you wanna be like, well, be helpful with rights. Well, I mean, whatever, you know, you've seen maps where they flip them around, right? To sort of give the um, Southern hemisphere perspective, but I'm gonna put it the way that, that we're used to looking at it. And so like you can see, here's, you know, here's Maine, here's New Hampshire. So you wanna find the main track because uh, you know, you, that's where I live. All right, it says B3 is Maine and B6 is New Hampshire. All right, that's a real fun record. Still going green, we've got Nick Lowe on the A side with the original version of Cruel To Be Kind. And the B side has uh, Wilco backing him up. They recorded that at Wilco's studio there in Chicago in uh, 2012. It's actually like a gatefold seven inch. Decent price on it too. It's like uh, only 10 bucks and big hole. So make sure you get one of your things and translucent, sorry, trans, like a tr transparent green vinyl. And 
This one, um, this one says on the label it says includes a digital download, which I think we need more downloads on things. Roy G. Biff, Biff, Blue, right? Here we are. Richard Thompson's soundtrack to the Cold Blue. Blue vinyl. Here's another, I use a post it to remind me, but so Albert Hammond Jr., 10 inch, also blue vinyl. Here we have, it doesn't say on the label what color it is, but this is also blue. It's a Motown compilation of like rare and unreleased stuff, but you got, you know, the Temptations and the Supremes and the Jackson 5 and stuff. That's a cool compilation. All right, here's another blue one. Matt Nathanson. It's a whole, the whole album, Some Mad Hope. Also by Kraft, who, um, it's done a lot of the ones that I've shown you. Uh, this is sky blue vinyl, so maybe a little lighter color. Haven't seen that one. And uh, we're gonna, maybe one of those is more indigo-like. I mean, indi that's kind of indigo colored, the cover anyway. And um, for violet, here we go, right? Um, uh, Tank in the Bangas live vibes too. And this is awesome because there's a little, you know, little screen next to the thing, and now it's like flipping over. So I'm like doing these somersaults. So if you get a thing where like I'm holding the record upside down, away over here, it's just because now I can't even see what's going on. But hey, anyway, that's Roy G. Biv, and I still got black records, and I still got the. Uh, I st well, hey, I'll just jump in, right? Hang on. Yeah, right over here. These are the records that are like more than one color. We'll go through these. So, Attitudes and Altitude, sorry. Altitudes and Attitude, the whole record. And this is, you know, it's funny, it's the bass players, right? From Anthrax and Megadeth. Nice looking picture disc. And check it out, you get like this little signed uh, thing. It's about the size of a CD booklet, maybe a little smaller, but as you can tell, you know, there's your, uh, Silver Sharpie on that. Good way to get their autographs. So nice looking picture just here by Chai. And we get, you know, lyrics on the back. Right, Emmett Otter's Jug Band Christmas. Let me show you. I'm just gonna take it out of the thing. A little bit of static on that. It's a really like nice, vibrant looking picture disc. It says record store on there, so I like that. Somebody was using their head when figuring out what part of the movie you put on the back. Nice music too, like it's like a Muppety thing. Very cool. Julia Kent, green and gray. And as you may be able to guess, it's a two LP set. So one of the records is green, the other one's gray. And she, um, she does like cello with tape loops. And um, so there aren't a lot of women on the list this year. There aren't, there isn't a whole lot of like uh, experimental music on the list this year. So here's another Frank piece. This is gonna be a Frank piece for me just because I like the idea of cello and electronics and tape loops and she's like field recordings and stuff. So um, I probably should have picked up on her before, but now I'm fascinated and um, you know, at Bull Moose, we, we uh, employees have to wait till, um, I forget what time it is this year, but like we get every we make sure like the, it's like one or two or whatever. I mean, we like everybody's like after the rush is after the big rush is over, then we can start looking at stuff for ourselves. So if there's one of these left, I'm gonna definitely want to buy it. And oh, it says it's an expanded version too. So um, you know, because two LPs, you can fit more than you could on the original CD. So that's pretty awesome. Um, this is like random colors, so we don't know. Fu Manchu, Live at Roadburn, and uh, you know, that's rock. There's a Paul McCartney picture disc. These are two songs that are, are uh, unreleased from the, uh, I think they're from the Kisses on the Bottom sessions. But let me, I'm just gonna try to hold this still because it's a really cool looking picture disc. Is that neat? I think that looks pretty good. I think it looks really good. All right, this is the only like straight up classical record on here, but I mean, it's not, well, whatever. I mean, it's Star Wars music, right? Um, Anna Sophie Wooder, obviously, violin player. It's, as you can tell, there's the Death Star stuff from Star Wars. And, uh, but 
you know, here we go. We got, you know, it even but starts out with Ray's theme, so it's stuff that hasn't been covered a bazillion times. And there, there's an etching of the Death Star on the back. Although you'd have Leia's theme on there as well. Okay, multiple colors. This this is really cool. This would be another. Um, so these are like so Raymond Scott is like one of those electronic pioneers um, from the uh, fifties and six. And so these are jingles that he did in the fifties and sixties and. Um, Blue vinyl on two LPs. Blue vinyls. One's blue vinyl. One's gold vinyl. And um, here's the back. It's a gatefold, but I not, can't open this one up. But let me just tell you some of the things that are on here. Because there's like like the demo. There's like a, a demo he did for X Lax. Um, let's see. When you bake with gold metal flour, demos. There's demos on here. Uh, there's a thing about how great cigarettes taste. That's you know. When you shop at a food town store, the vocal mix something. For, oh, it's compatible for RCA Victor Television. Um, I mean, this is like seems pretty seriously awesome. This is another one of the ones that like I'm hoping to pick up. Um, but the nice thing about uh, I think there's only like 800 of these or whatever. But the nice thing about liking stuff that like who else that would be of limited interest to a lot of people. Uh, is that, um, you know, if you want something like that, you have a pretty good chance of getting it. There's Rod and Gab, they go by. This is the metal covers, which was like what they were known for all along, right? Um, and huh, like Seasons in the Abyss is one of the ones on here. So I'll we'll just give you the back, back cover as well. It'll be fun if you like, you know, if you're into metal but want to hear it done on like acoustic guitar and like a Spanish guitar style. They're 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 pretty cool. Steep Canyon Rangers, and uh, I think this is just I don't know what color it is. Wait a minute, let me read that. Um, oh yeah, <laughs> North Carolina flag tricolor vinyl. Here's Sid Vicious record on. Um, I think it's again tricolor, yeah, red, white, and blue. Um, you know, the tri it's like now they've figured out how to, you know, so I think, so records are pressed, like the thing that actually gets put into the record pressing plant, and they call it puck because it's kind of like a hockey puck. So I think what people have figured out how to do is, you know, normally that's just one color made out of like, so what they've started doing is that you can like make a red one and a blue one and then cut them both in half, I think, and put them together and then. Um, so now that they're starting to do that with, uh, you know, three colors, I think is how that's done. And um, this is, God, live. It's, it's two live albums. Sorry, uh, two different dates, but four sets. So that'll be fun. And uh, one last picture. Disc. You probably noticed those were all in alphabetical order or pretty close to it. Frank Zappa, nice picture, 10 inch. Look at that. It's great, great image. This is. Um, uh, oh, there we go. Back to the gold foil numbering, and the this is to remind us that there's that Hot Rats, Hot Rats Sessions, like six CD set. I think that's coming out in December, actually. So this will be your first taste of um, of these. They are um, ah, this is cool. So you get like a rough mix of the rhythm track of of a couple songs from the from it, and then the um, the, the B side has the like single mixes of the uh, the big single off that album. Let's do some black vinyl. All right, here's one of those three inch records. The only one of the f there's four Disney three inch records. Um, the Lion King got here a lot earlier than the other three. As uh, I am recording this right now, which is the Friday before Black Friday. Uh, Bull Moose, this is the only one of these that we've received. Um, I haven't seen anything that the others aren't coming, so you'll have like four to choose from. But the, the cool thing about it is it's not they're like all separate. It's not like, um, you know, the first few batches where there were four in a big plastic bag and you they were like the same cover, so you didn't know which one you were getting, but you had to buy, but at least they were in a set of four. This way, um, it's separate, so you could be like, I want the Lion King, but uh, I don't need Aladdin, or you know, vice versa, or whatever.
black vinyl. Here we go. These are either black vinyl or um, uh, or I don't know what color it is. So let me show you what we got here. And I think these are in alphabetical order. I think I alphabetized all these. All right, Jeff Baker sings, It Could Happen to You. And this is another one of those ones that Kraft did, so it's, we're used to this now from them, right? All, if it's a record that ought to sound good, and if it's possible to do what they do, like, in it's, it's all analog, they had Kevin Gray do this one again, and um, the, I keep mentioning his name, and if you're not, not familiar with Kevin Gray, he's one of the guys who cuts the lacquers, um, and he's r really, really good at, I find, um, at making, like, vintage recordings sound fantastic uh, on today, today's equipment. He's so good at it. Uh, it's got that, like, really cool, super, like, oversaturated colors from, like, you know, your typical 1958 jazz album cover. Black vinyl. And they even, like, use the uh, old Riverside logo, um, which they own. Here's Barnes Courtney, a 7-inch. Uh, according to the press release, these are brand new songs, but the press release was written, the CD's already out, so I think this is stuff that's on the CD. All right, Canned Heat, a Christmas album by Canned Heat. I'm just gonna hold this up here so you can see which songs are on there, kind of uh, your regular Christmas out stuff. And um, also, you'll notice here, you can see my shirt or whatever in the back, it's, it's die cut. Miles Davis, this is, there's two Miles Davis records. This is the only one I have in hand right now, Miles in Tokyo. This was recorded in 1964, obviously in Japan, and released by Sony Japan in 1969. It's never been available in the US before. I mean, except probably, I mean, as an import. And it comes with a really nice insert. Great photograph. I love this photograph of, of Miles and Ron Carter. And uh, some Japanese liner notes, which I can't tell you what they say. Nice gatefold record with more fantastic photography. And um, it is... From, from this type of sleeve indicates to me that it was pressed at RTI. So um, fortunately I've had this for a couple weeks, listened to it, it's a really good recording, super well mastered, and it's a great pressing, super quiet, uh, a lot of dynamics to it, you know. And, it's, and the, uh, a lot of jazz folks are real excited about this because um, it's one of the, it's like Sam Rivers on sax, on sax, it was didn't play with Miles for very long, so I don't think there's a whole lot of stuff with him in the band at the same time. Um, Herbie Hancock is the piano player on here, and he uh, so like the label Get On Down, which I think is from Boston. They um, have been going through jazz records in the like Sony Japan catalog, so they've done a couple um, really nice Herbie Hancock records for like record, previous record store days. Um, they got another Herbie Hancock one coming out. That's gonna be really cool. So like if you're, you know, if you're a fan of like 60s or 70s jazz, like just get those. I'm um, just telling you, they always do a real nice job. Um, the other Miles Davis record is one that Legacy's putting out. So regular US Sony. And that is outtakes from Miles Davis in a silent way era. And those are stuff that were on the like in a silent way sessions box set. But this will be the first time that they've been on like easily available vinyl. And I don't know what that means is if there was some like special legacy only thing or if it was like bootlegged before, I don't know. But first, it's first chance to really get them. Also black vinyl. Add in Beauty and the Beat. This is like, it's, it's underground hip hop from, um, he's an East Coast guy, and this is like 15 years old or so, but it has like, uh, he's got like all this like 
like psych again it's like a psychedelic version you can sort of get a sense of it from the cover it's kind of like a psychedelic version of mid 2000s independent hip hop really um, it it's just crazy it's, uh, again really really interesting so you could come at it from the from the like hip hop side of things if you're into hip hop and you want to get like go out a little bit but you could also come at it from the like psychedelic side you know like if um if you tend to listen to a lot of like weird music and you would like to listen to some more hip hop this might this might be uh this might be something for you and the uh here is a nice insert and these are like the undoctored photos that are on the cover like they put wigs <laughs> wigs on on everybody and uh, it's a little easier if you look at this it's a little easier to recognize who um, everybody is and I'll leave that to you for your homework there's an Ian and Sylvia record this is like a rarities thing two LPs and just want to warn you the people who like did the data at the record company who sent this out sent it out to record stores as Tyson Ian and Sylvia Tyson and in fact, Sylvia, I think, compiled it. But the thing is, it's not going to be filed under I, where all the other Ian and Sylvia records are. A lot of stores are going to put this under T if they're just going off what's in their in their computer. Like at Bull Moose, I know, will have it under T because it's, even though there's going to be people who are like, man, Ian and Sylvia goes under I, but we're always like, put it under the where it says in the computer because like that's how it is. You know, somebody's looking on our website and is like finds it. They'd be like, "It's gonna our website's gonna tell you it's under T." And um, somebody looking at the record store they list, they probably saw it's filed under T. So um, look under T. Here is an unreleased music by the JBs, or mostly unreleased. Black vinyl. And this is now again did this, and um, you know they're they've the label now again has been doing. Uh, they must have access to like James Brown's stuff because uh, they did like an unreleased album like five years ago. They released a JB's album that was recorded. Uh, you know, like James Brown produced it, but then that version of the JB's like left him um, a couple of the guys went on to sort of like uh, Parliament Funkadelic like Boots you know uh, Bootsy Collins is the um, most famous one so this though like a typical now again release has a super great booklet with a long essay really cool photos and um, here you can see that is the uh, probably photo of probably the only surviving um, acetate of this and so I should tell you what's on it so it's the uh, like the first recordings that that uh, the Bootsy Collins version of the JB's did for James Brown so there's like a demo that's never been released before that is what basically got them the gig and uh, the second side is the like full 22 minute recording of a medley that uh, James Brown trimmed down to like 13 minutes for this unreleased album. So five years ago, it was entirely unreleased. We got 13 minutes of it. Now we get the full 22 minutes and we get the A-side with two other tracks. Haven't been around. There are um, both uh, Robert Johnson and Blind Willie Johnson, like replica 10 inches. So here's the thing, they run at 78. Uh, but they are like, um, they're not, the grooves are not like on old 78s. The grooves are like normal, what we call, what they call micro grooves. Um, so if you can play like this record or any of these other records, you can play this as long as your turntable goes 78. And I should just show you all the like beautiful detail here. They went for like as vintage as possible, right? old Columbia logo, the whole thing, and they've added like, this traffic is are the folks who, who've been doing these. Um, and they've been doing them for the last couple of record store days. They're quite popular. Um, and you get this like fake Obi, 
I call it a faux because it's not a real OB strip because it doesn't go around it. Um, but it's just on with like, um, you know, that sort of like rubber cementy type glue thing. So you can totally take it off if you want to have it just, you know, look, look totally, whatever. Just have it look, you know what I mean, vintage. And they have the Vocali on. They did the same thing. This is the um, other record. Those, like, it's, people keep buying those. Like, so I, I think they must be turning out pretty, pretty good. People seem to be happy with them. Here we have a like totally brand new song by the new pornographers, Stand Up, and there's a demo. So Stand Up's not on the album that came out this year. And uh, there's also a demo on here. And this is black vinyl. I can open this up because they sent me promo of it. Small. Right, so like I was saying, small hole, black vinyl, red label. Um, forgot to show you this before. You get a uh, uh, jazz dispensary like window cling and in with that jazz dispensary record earlier. All right, um, you know, uh, I okay, some place to put these things. Now, still on the uh, black vinyl or I don't know what colored vinyl. Jean Baptiste, a uh, jazz album. Newer jazz guy, Brothers Osborne, 2LP, live at the Ryman. Uh, what did I want to say about that? Country, country music. The Comet is coming. There we are. File number 733 UFO. This is interesting. This is, um, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so it's a reissue of a spoken word record from the 60s where um, somebody, uh, you know, like interviewed people who had survived alien abductions. And the second record is a bunch of like newer psychedelic bands that are uh, not super well known actually. Um, is it J.D. McPherson, two songs, two holiday songs, seven inch. Um, he's, I think he's got a holiday album out right now. J.S. Ondara. Here we are, the rarities thing. Leon Redbone. This is a live album that totally looks like a bootleg based on the uh, like design here, but it's legit. And um, I know that some of you are concerned about the. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, this this is from 1977, so it's it's too new to be public domain in Europe, and so. Uh, Things is stuff that's 50 years old goes into the public domain in Europe, and so what that means is any jackass can like go take a CD or a scratched record or whatever if it's 50 years old, just like press up a bunch of copies of it and try to sell them. Now none of those people have any way of getting access to the master tapes, so you're basically getting the like sound quality degradation of a CD or an MP3 plus the like distortion that you get from uh, a record that's made by a shithead so um, totally not worth totally not a good idea but how do you tell the difference between something that's legit and something that's not and the way you do it the way I do it, and I might be wrong about this, is I look and see if the record label has a website. And then you go to it, and if you go to this company, Made in Germany, it's like MIG.DE, you can see they look pretty legit, but they do have a lot of, um, uh, you know, live, live stuff that, uh, you know, you wouldn't expect to see. Now, the thing about it is that uh, the companies that I think are most likely to be bogus don't have websites and um, but they do get their data into like data feeds that record stores use so you might find some of that stuff leaking through so if you do a, like a duck duck go search on the internet and it brings you to a record store website even if it's like some European store um, don't use that to validate whether or not it's legit. You gotta look for the artist website. Now, um, 
it's real confusing though, and that stuff kind of gets mixed in. Like I actually saw one of the one of the major labels on their own website had on the front page they had bootlegs of one of their major major artists, like you know one of those artists that sells like has sold tens of millions of albums over their career and like knighted maybe. Uh, but it slipped through. Even their own record company blew it. So it's hard. It's hard to tell. Um, so that's my secret. And uh, last thing I want to say about that is sometimes it's really cool to say, yeah, I, I have that on vinyl. But just keep in mind that um, if those thing, if you're buying that, it makes it harder for the le a legitimate release to happen. And I. Uh, have heard once or twice people talking about doing things and then they find out that, you know, if 500 or 1,000 bootlegs have already been sold of it, they assume that's like 1,000 people who won't buy the real one and that can just make the, the project not worth doing. Todd Rundgren covering Squeeze song. Here we have the record company, kind of like a Roots Rock band, early songs in rarities, and I do know what color the vinyl is because here it is. It's black vinyl, show it to you. There we go. And it does have a nice, uh, you know, inner sleeve. Frank Sinatra, two versions of my way. One of them is uh, not like super duper easy to find. More or is a two LP tribute to Skip Spence. And uh, let me just tell you some of the people who's on here, who are on here. Robert Plant, Mark Lanigan, Alejandro Escovito, um, Jay Farrar, uh, Flying Saucer Attack, so it's an interesting thing. Um, Mud Honey, Robin Hitchcock, Tom Waits, so Beck. Um, oh, the minus five, so there's another connected to things. And Skip Spence himself, one song, Flaming Lips. So definitely, you know, and there's a bunch more. It's a whole double album. So. Actually, some really very interesting, cool stuff. Squirrel Nut Zippers, Christmas Caravan. This is the kind of thing that um, you would, a lot of people would have made colored vinyl. It wouldn't surprise me if uh, you bought this and found out that it was colored vinyl. But the thing about it is it's a, you know, it's a late 90s major label release. So um, there was no, um, no vinyl back when. So uh, it's special just, just to even exist. This is another Frank piece, possible Frank piece for you. Tomba 4 is the band, California Soul, is is the uh, the unreleased album by them. Uh, like if you um, go to YouTube, you can find the song California Soul if you're interested. But um, it is, so it's like about 50 years old, 48 years old. Uh, pretty sure they're from Brazil. And it's like um, bossa nova, tending into like slightly pop territory. It's pretty darn cool. Um, mastered by Kevin Gray again, um, and uh, yeah, that, that's one that uh, might be might be pretty fun to get. Unless you're just like, no, I don't like bossa nova, then you probably aren't gonna gonna like that. These are my, this is my last stack. These are all. Uh, white vinyl or some kind of variation on white vinyl. This one is white marble vinyl, Hippocampus. It's the, their two demo collections put together as a double LP. And here, this is on white bloodshot vinyl. It's a two LP set from Insane Clown Posse. Masters of the Universe. And this is, I think, clear with white splatter. This is, you know, the Dolph. Rundgren album. Bill Conti did the uh, soundtrack there. Who uh, also did Rocky. And we got Nas, Stillmatic. It's like, it's not really a comeback album, but kind of, kind of, sort of. Nice double LP. This is Silver Vinyl. Um, I have test pressings of it though, so they're just, they're black vinyl. But um, it's, it's from Get On Down and you can, this, is like the kind of plastic that RTI uses and get on down stuff usually sounds pretty good so um, I'm just gonna tell you that uh, 
it's uh, whatever. It's gonna be silver, but it's gonna sound good. Here's a clear vinyl, and here's Sundays. Loves to do the mono mix if they can, seems like it. And this is the mono mix of a Steppenwolf self titled album. This is the one with Born to Be Wild and um, Suki Sue, or Suki Susie. Suki, uh, it seems like it's got different, different titles depending on um, how explicit you want to get, I think. Um, anyhow, let me show you the back. This is. Um, Let's see if it says on here where it's pressed. No, it does not. Um, but, you know, uh, Bob Irwin often does the remastering himself for this, and so they usually, uh, you know, he does a good job. Um, and if you look and see, it's not glare that you're getting, because it's, um, it's actually like on that, uh, you know, uh, lunar foil looking. Um, Paper stock. They might be giants. This is clear vinyl. Don't let's start. Tony Joe White. This is white vinyl with. Is it straight up white vinyl? Yeah, white vinyl. Tony Joe White. It's a double album. And what I want you to see, let me just hold it back up for you. But check this part now. So this is actually this die cut. It's cut out. And so the. This part's all cut out, and the picture of him, it must be the um, the inner sleeve that has that nice four-color uh, photo of him. Last one, The Wren's first album. This one is on, uh, I think they call it Coke Bottle Clear Vinyl, but it's actually kind of translucent. Here you go. I don't know, it looks like it's almost exactly the same color as the wall behind me, but that's just like crummy lighting or whatever um, and you can see it all kind of goes along pretty well with the cover it's a 2 LP set and it's like um, you know there are early mid 90s like where this one's from I don't know, 94 or something like that alternative rock but a little more on the like replacement -y side of the world than say Nirvana I'm sorry if I don't show a record you really wanted to see um, a lot of them I just didn't have yet by the time I had to make the video, but they'll show up this week and should be in stock at your local store by, you know, uh, whatever, <laughs> duh, Friday. Um, but there's a couple things I should mention. The weekend, big delay there, that's been canceled. Maybe we'll see it next year. I think they want to do it still. And the Dave Matthews Band box, that's been just pushed back. Uh, a week, just a short delay, uh, but it'll be in your local store next Friday, December 6th. And I guess there's another title, like a 7-inch, where when they uh, went to, you know, like a truck trucking company mistake ended up so that what they thought was going to be a 7-inch ended up um, being a whole pallet of uh, air filters. So uh, this one 7-inch, I assume they'll find the 7-inches later and get them out to us. and so. Um, if you don't see that particular thing, well, don't sweat it, it'll be out later. These are colored vinyl, but um, I don't know what color they are. Start with a double live album by Sebastian Bach. Here we go. Colored, but I don't know what. This is DMX, another live album, one LP. Don't know the color. This is from a, uh, like a Cypress Hill Festival or something. I'm not too sure what it was. But check this out. There we go. Uh, hand numbered. Which, you know, used to be more common on Record Store Day. Uh, and the Sebastian Bach is stamped, I see. There's Fu Manchu. These are like random colored vinyl. So that's a live rock album. Hey, a lot of more live albums. This one is a studio album. Julia Kent. Green and Gray Expanded. And this is another possible Frank piece for you. Um, you could guess, though, the, oh, the vinyl, there's a green record and a gray record. So I guess I do know what color the records are. Um, should have been in a different pile. Anyhow, she does, like, cello with electronics and also mixes in, you know, like, uh, field recordings or found sound. So, um, 
this is one of those things where it's like it's out it, it just the concept is really cool and so if you little adventurous or if you think you need there's not enough women represented in the record store they list another reason to get it but I think it's uh, I think it's pretty cool Lisa Loeb the 12 inch with the song stay that was in uh, it's in a movie rea called Reality Bites back in the 90s. This is her big, big song that busted her out in front of everybody. Daptone has a collection of you know a bunch of their uh, bunch of their artists. Color, don't know the color, and it is um, going to be. It's called Rhythm Showcase. So you're not going to find this under D for Daptone. You're going to find it under various artists or R for Rhythm depending on how stores like to f file stuff. Saturday morning, cartoons, greatest hits. This is another like 90s thing. It's um, color vinyl, don't know the color, and it is a bunch of like big alt rock bands from the 90s doing, um, you know, theme songs. You know, so like, Liz Fair and uh, Mary Lou Lord with Semisonic, Matthew Sweet doing Scooby Doo, where are you? You got Josie and the Pussycats by Juliana Hatfield, Tanya Donnelly, you, you kind of get it. Ramones, Collective Soul, Butthole Surfers, Violent Femmes, Toadies even, Sublime, doing Hong Kong Fooey. And speaking of Sublime, this is a color record, I don't know what color, by Sublime. It's half by Sublime. One side is because the title is The Roots of Sublime. So it is four songs that Sublime covered. Uh, one side has Sublime's, Sublime's versions and the other side has, uh, I think it has the original songs. Okay, that's it for the Record Store Day Black Friday 2019. I'll be back with more stuff so sometime. So subscribe if you want to, um, you know, Get notified when I'm back, and uh, I hope you find all the stuff you're looking for. I hope you get some great gifts for people, and they're into it. You know, sharing music, we all know how awesome that is when you turn somebody on to something and they like it. And um, I also hope that until the next time we talk, that you are listening to something awesome. So guess what? Bonus material. While the video was rendering, all this other stuff showed up. Gotta show it to you. And a lot of these have unreleased things anyway, so it's a good, appropriate to be bonus material. Let me start with this one here. Here's a James Brown record. This one um, was recorded in 1969, like after a gig. Uh, that they were recording anyway, so they still had the stuff set up in the venue. James Brown just wanted to keep working. So, um, this has got a couple takes of the Blood, Sweat, and Tears song, Spinning Wheel, and it's got the complete 10 minute, like unedited um, take of Baby Here I Come. And um, there's, you know, there's a bunch of, well, anyway, a bunch of cool, rare stuff on there from James Brown, and it's on nice, heavy, heavy black vinyl. Here we go, I'm gonna show you the record. Well, you know, you know, you know what black vinyl looks like. And check this out. You see the black and orange label. Well, check out the inside. Orange. Nice. All right, Motown Rare and Unreleased. I showed you this one before, but now I just wanna let you get a look at the nice blue vinyl. It looks, if you were looking at it like that, it would look opaque, but I can see some sunlight shining through, and it is slightly translucent. Of course, if you're going to do, you know, the, you always associate blue, right, is kind of the Motown color, so blue vinyl is appropriate. And I don't really even tell you what was on this before. Um, it's, you know, a bunch of like mono mixes and um, alternate takes and just cool stuff like that, that most of these have been released on like box sets and things here and there as bonus material. but. Now it's like actually like a um, whole record, so I think I think you'll enjoy that. Here's a Charlie Parker record. This these uh, the tracks on here were recorded, most of them in 1951, some in 1953, and this uh, 
it was recorded, uh, released, you know, a couple different times on Clef Records. Like they would do, you know, like uh, four song, twelve inch, and then another one. So this stuff, um, but this was the first time, and obviously in the uh, 50s, this was the first time that this stuff had actually been put all together on a 12-inch um, LP. So it was a good compilation and it is on a nice yellow, feels like 180 gram vinyl. And I should also mention that um, I used a good pressing plant for it. All right, Saturday morning's greatest hits. I told you all about this. I'm not gonna tell you who's on it again, but as you can see, Lots of good liner notes there. One about every song. Track listings. Who's on each one. Here's the same sticker. And let me show you what color it is because we did not know. Well, there's a green one. Trans, kind of like a transparent green. Translucent green. And the other one is blue. All right. Frank Sinatra, My Way. It's still two versions of the song, but I can see the record itself comes in this nice QRP branded uh, anti-static sleeve. So good news for you if you want it to sound good. Roots of Sublime showed you that before. Uh, and, but now we know, kind of makes sense, it is smoke vinyl, right? And that's like, uh, um, this is what it is, you know. It's like a sort of like a coke bottle with 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 the darker uh, darker gray woven in. And I didn't tell you who whose songs they're covering. Uh, probably would have been a cool thing if I did that. Uh, Bad Brains, The Melodians, Dee Dee Warwick, and The Wailing Souls. That makes sense. Them people they be into. Now, you two, you think of you two as an '80s band or maybe '90s band. Well, they actually had they released an EP, like a three-song thing in Ireland in 1979. Now, this is the first real reissue of it. It's been like, the songs have been like bonus tracks and things before, but this is the first time it's been available on a, uh, as an actual 12-inch like it originally was. Nice, heavy, black vinyl. And, um... Yeah, so it's Out of Control, Stories for Boys and Boy Slash Girl. Um, you can see, here we are, they make 17,000 of them, because obviously this is a big deal, it's you too. Um, so, but the, oh yeah, so these are songs that were like, re two of them were re-recorded for boys, so the, um, even if you have that, these are different versions, and it's their very, very first release. In fact, I think it's the first stuff that, I don't think it was their first session, but maybe the first session that was good. The last record I can show you is the uh, it's Frank Zappa, Peaches and Regalia, you know, the Hot Rats, Sessions thing, but I can take it out of the plastic and just let you get a nice look at it. And yeah, um, it does look really, really nice. Okay, now I'm done, unless we get some more mail today, but hopefully not. And um, hopefully you get to see this someday. Hopefully I can get it up tonight. So long.